I'd like to thank Dr. Judith Koenig for joining us today. Dr. Koenig is a researcher at the Ontario Veterinary College and has been working on case control comparison of cervical spine radiographs from horses with a clinical diagnosis of cervical facet disease and comparing that to normal horses. So first of all, can you explain cervical facet disease and tell us if osteoarthritis in the neck is common in horses? Well, common is relative. Osteoarthritis is very common, you know, in, in any athlete. And um, osteoarthritis uh, appears to be more common in certain type of horses. And uh, with aging of a horse, this happens more and more commonly. Uh, what it actually means is, like, we, we normally understand that there are seven vertebra in the neck. And um, it's actually not the main junction of the vertebra where they have their um, discs in between, but it is actually the little joints on the side of it where the nerve roots come out of the spinal cord. And uh, we in people often have issues with it, and so do horses. And they can get nerve root inflammation um, if there's osteoarthritis of the facet joints because of inflammation that affects the soft tissues around it, and also because the facets enlarge when there is bone spurs developing and things like that. Are certain breeds or disciplines more likely to develop cervical facet disease? Well, we have shown in our study that there is a larger number of dressage horses that is affected by it, uh, most likely, though, as a breed selection, too, um, that certain breeds are more commonly used for dressage, and the way they are working, they have to use their neck and have to arch their neck a lot to get that nice rounded body. Um, so that's where this may be coming from. How difficult is it to diagnose osteoarthritic changes in the neck using radiographs? Well, that was the whole reason we did that study is that we quite commonly saw in horses that were six, seven, eight years old on pre-purchase radiographs, some changes in the neck. And uh, Sue Dyson has said many years ago that 50% of horses have changes in the lower neck in the very last pair of them and um, they don't have clinical signs. And then there, has, there have been a few publications that have uh, gone to grading them uh, and trying to relate them to clinical signs. And I just found it odd that we would often see it on pre-purchase exams and the horses would not have any clinical signs of anything um, attributable to neck problems, which is always very difficult. So that's what prompted us actually to do that because I think unfairly some horses were eliminated from purchase because people were worried about the facet arthritis that they saw, even though it was mild. And what signs do horses present with when they're suffering from osteoarthritis in the neck? Um, the most common we found in this study was that they actually have atrophy, so muscle wasting, and that the hollow in the lower neck basically is more easily to see, is more pronounced, and the vertebra itself are, are more prominent appearing. That was the most clini common clinical sign. Sometimes we would also find that they have a stiff neck, but that's a very subjective assessment. Um, so when you would move them from side to side, they weren't in the classic carrot stretches. They weren't really able to reach something that was by their hip. Um, or the riders would complain that when you put them in a frame, um, that the horse just had a hard time uh, doing that work. And then also sometimes these were horses that presented for a very mild front limb lameness. And we would uh, block the lameness and we would block all the way up the limb, trying to find an area where the pain was coming from and we couldn't. So these are the clinical signs. Radiographs alone, to have find changes on radiographs alone is not enough to say a horse has facet osteoarthritis.
what is the significance of the finding that these osteoarthritic changes can be detected on a radiograph in horses with no signs of cervical facet disease? That's a good question. What we found too is we had two radiologists that we blinded um, to the group. So we blinded them to know if the horses had uh, clinical disease or they were just out of a control group. So what we did is we looked at horses that we had treated with intra medication of facet disease and then cohort matched them which means the same age and the same breed and the same sport um, and used horses that were showing in whatever discipline um, they were the diseased horse was in and they were showing in that discipline so we went to barns and then looked at these horses did clinical evaluations radiographed them and then had the radiologist score them and interestingly enough um, there were more horses that were scored um, higher in the lower neck that had also clinical signs but having said that, if there's a statistical way to evaluate if the radiologists agree in the grade of facet disease they assign. And then it turned out to us that uh, it was not super repeatable. So 50% to 60% of the times they would agree, but often they did not agree. And that does not make then radiographic evaluation, particularly grading, very reliable if this is the only assessment you use. Can you summarize up some of the conclusions of your, uh, of your research then? Well, our conclusion was that the repeatability of grading of osteoarthritis on radiographs is not great. And as a result of that, horses need to have clinical signs of atrophy of the neck muscles, uh, stiffness uh, when bending to the side, or a low-grade um, unblockable lameness. But it's very important that the lameness has been evaluated and blocked out, or not blocked out, attempted to be blocked out, um, to tie them together. And uh, all the horses in our group, we also treated them with uh, steroids in the facet joints with ultrasound guided injection and monitor monitored how they performed and a bit more than two thirds of them almost three quarters returned to a previous level of exercise with that so that was a good overall you know insight that we got from that study well thank you for sharing your expertise uh, with us today dr koenig mm -hmm.